Good morning, YouTubers. You have reached the Brian Sledge channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Uh, thank you very much, and have a great day. Bye. We have at least 19 members of Congress who will be introducing today a 12-page House resolution detailing misconduct at the highest levels of the Department of Justice and Federal Bureau of Investigation. It will be outlining FISA abuse, how and why the Hillary Clinton email probe ended, and how and why the Trump-Russia probe began. This resolution also calls for the appointment of a second special counsel to investigate the gross misconduct with the understanding that the Justice Department cannot be expected to investigate itself. It's very important to note that the ranks of the DOJ and FBI are filled with amazing patriotic Americans who love their job, take their oaths seriously, and perform their jobs objectively with much respect for the rule of law. These are historic, legendary agencies that require transparency and accountability regarding the misconduct that took place. It is important for these exceptional public servants to, and these important agencies to continue their work moving forward stronger than ever before. As the resolution states, the concerns of the American people are serious and the issues requiring an immediate, unbiased, independent, and thorough investigation are broad. In just the past few days, we learned that the DOJ, FBI, or both, appear to have planted at least one person into, the, into Donald Trump's presidential campaign to infiltrate and surveil the campaign. This action alone reminds us of just how necessary this resolution is, as well as the appointment of a second special counsel. First, we will discuss some of the misconduct related to how and why the Hillary Clinton email probe ended. Then we will get into details related to the FISA abuse that took place. And finally, we will discuss the misconduct with regards to how and why the Donald Trump Russia probe began. With regards to Secretary Clinton, federal law and State Department rules, regulations, and protocol were violated with her use of a private email server in her Chappaqua, New York home. Official communications were transmitted on an unsecured server and included emails that contained classified information when they were sent, in addition to other emails which were retroactively deemed classified by the Department of State. Former FBI Director James Comey has acknowledged that 65 of these illicit emails were classified as secret and 22 were classified as top secret. There is significant evidence that the use of the, this private server by Secretary Clinton was meant to avoid compliance with the Freedom of Information Act, 5 U.S.C. 552, and done to obstruct justice by not having to turn over incriminating emails in the case of a subpoena. Various sensitive emails subject to grand jury and congressional subpoenas were destroyed on Secretary Clinton's private server through the use of bleach bit software and the destruction of hardware before they could be obtained by investigators in March 2015. In a September 2015 meeting between then Attorney General Loretta Lynch and then Director Comey, the Attorney General instructed Director Comey to refer to the Clinton email investigation as a matter thus watering down the severity of the investigation and aligning the Justice Department's rhetoric with the messaging of the Clinton campaign. Cheryl Mills, who served as counselor and chief of staff to Hillary Clinton during her tenure as Secretary of State, was offered immunity from prosecution exchange for access to her laptop that contained many of the questionable emails. According to transcripts obtained by the Senate Judiciary Committee, former Director Comey was prepared to exonerate Hillary Clinton as early as April or May of 2016 when he began to draft a statement announcing the end of his investigation before up to 17 key witnesses, including Secretary Clinton herself and several of her closest aides were even interviewed. Comey contradicted these transcripts when he stated during sworn testimony before the House Judiciary Committee on September 28, 2016, that he made the decision not to recommend criminal charges for Secretary Clinton after she was interviewed by the FBI on July 2, 2016. Director Comey, in the final draft of his statement, allowed FBI agent Peter Strzok to replace grossly negligent, which is legally punishable under federal law, with extremely careless, which is not legally punishable under federal law. Federal law states gross negligence in handling, handling the nation's intelligence can be punished criminally with prison time or fines. There is also the June 27, 2016 infamous meeting between A.G. Lynch and former President Bill Clinton aboard her plane on the tarmac in Phoenix, Arizona, immediately thereafter Hillary Clinton was exonerated. On July 5, 2016, Director Comey violated DOJ rules and unilaterally exonerated then-presidential candidate Hillary Clinton in a public statement to the media. One day later, on July 6, 2016, an announcement followed from A.G. Lynch that the DOJ investigation into then-presidential candidate Hillary Clinton would be formally closed with no charges. 
In September 2016, the FBI, during examination of the personal laptop of former Congressman Anthony Weiner, as part of an unrelated in investigation into him sending sexually explicit messages to a teenage girl, discovered previously unexamined Department of State classified emails belonging to his spouse, top Clinton aide, Huma Abedin. It took until October 28th of 2016 for Director Comey to announce via a letter to the chairs of the relevant congressional committees that he was reopening the investigation to Hillary Clinton, an additional egregious delay after the FBI failed to even examine the illicit emails after the FBI discovered them on Anthony Weiner's computer. FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe's wife, Dr. Jill McCabe, was running for Virginia State Senate at the time and as of October 26th had received $675,000 in donations from the Virginia Democratic Party and Common Good VA, the leadership pack controlled by Democratic Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe, a longtime Clinton associate. An investigation conducted by the Office of the DOJ Inspector General noted that on October 27th of 2016, Director Comey required that Deputy Director McCabe remove himself from a conference call regarding the Clinton emails discovered on Anthony Weiner's laptop to avoid the appearance of a conflict of interest after media reports surfaced noting those questionable political donations. Further investigation to whether then FBI Director, Deputy Director McCabe and other FBI officials sought to purposely delay the release of these illicit emails for politically motivated purposes is warranted. Throughout the Obama administration, the DOJ failed to fully investigate serious concerns surrounding former President Clinton, then Secretary of State Clinton, and the Clinton Foundation's connection to the Russian company Uranium One, which received Department of State approval to purchase U.S. uranium mines in 2010. Throughout Hillary Clinton's tenure as Secretary of State, a family foundation controlled by the chairman of Uranium One made $2,350,000 in contributions to the Clinton Foundation, which were not publicly disclosed, in violation of an agreement Secretary Clinton had with the Obama White House to publicly identify all donors. In 2010, while Russian state interests were working to both acquire a majority stake in Uranium One and to purchase American mines, Bill Clinton was paid $500,000 for a speech in Moscow by a Kremlin-linked Russian investment bank that was underwriting Uranium One stock. A confidential informant who worked with the FBI to uncover bribery and other corruption related to the Uranium One matter was threatened with reprisal by the Justice Department under A.G. Lynch when he tried to come forward in 2016. The Senate Judiciary Committee launched a probe in October 2017 to investigate the Uranium One matter including whether federal departments and agencies such as the Department of State knew the FBI was looking into possible corruption before the deal was approved. An investigation conducted by the Office of the Inspector General noted that a multi-state investigation into the questionable dealings of the Clinton Foundation with corrupt donors was shut down in August of 2016, when pressure was asserted on the FBI by senior officials within the Obama Justice Department. The same IG's report also noted that shutting down this investigation into Clinton Foundation impropriety and influence peddling was connected to high-ranking officials in the DOJ and FBI, including A.G. Lynch, Director Comey, and Deputy Director McCabe. The same IG's report also found that Deputy Director McCabe, after consenting to the political pressure to shut down the Clinton Foundation multi-state investigation, attempted to later use unauthorized leaks to the press to create a false narrative that he was opposed to the closure of the investigation, that he did this in an attempt to salvage his reputation following revelations of questionable Clinton-connected money being donated to, the, to his wife's Virginia State Senate campaign. With regards to FISA abuse, in October 2016, the FBI and DOJ used politically biased, unverified sources to obtain warrants issued by the United States Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court of Review, the FISA Court, that aided in the surveillance of U.S. citizens, including Carter Page. The warrants grant U.S. intelligence and law enforcement agencies sweeping power to collect bulk information and conduct about collection, which results in surveillance of a broad array of private communications from the past, present, and future, including those of U.S. citizens not specifically targeted in the FISA authorized warrant. To obtain these warrants, FBI and DOJ officials submitted an unverified dossier prepared by Christopher Steele to the FISA court, failing to disclose that Christopher Steele was hired by the firm Fusion GPS, which was hired by the Democratic National Committee and Hillary Clinton campaign to prepare this dossier, and that the source was unreliable and soon thereafter was going to be terminated as a source. The FISA court was not informed that Christopher Steele was actively opposed to the election of Donald Trump, that he was the unnamed source cited in the media reports that the FBI used to corroborate his dossier, 
and that Fusion GPS had been hired to perform previous anti-Trump research efforts in 2015. The Woods procedures, which are the FBI's mandatory vetting process required for all FISA warrant applications instituted to ensure that all the facts contained in an application are accurate and verified to clearly support probable cause for a warrant were not followed. Former Director Comey admitted in sworn testimony to the Senate Judiciary Committee on June 8th of 2017 that material contained in the Steele dossier was known to be both salacious and unverified. Since FISA warrant applications are rarely turned down, are almost never subject to appeal, are presented in closed court with no public record, where the government is not challenged by any defense, it is imperative that the government take extra care to validate the information being utilized to build their case before they take the extraordinary step of waiving rights of a U.S. citizen without his or her knowledge or the opportunity to present a defense. At the FISA court, the government has a responsibility not only to provide the best evidence in support of its case, but also the best evidence against its case. These deeply flawed and questionable FISA warrant applications utilizing illicit sources and politically biased intelligence were approved by the DOJ and FBI officials at the highest levels before being submitted to the FISA court. It was further not disclosed to the FISA court that the wife of fourth-ranking DOJ official Bruce Orr worked for Fusion GPS and that Christopher Steele directly transmitted the dossier and other information through Bruce Orr for submission to the FISA court. With regards to the Trump-Russia probe, to this day, there has not been any evidence that Donald Trump colluded with the Russians to win the 2016 election. In fact, there isn't evidence that President Trump committed any crime to win the 2016 election. The initial FBI probe into the Trump campaign and alleged collusion with Russia was launched in July 2016 based on questionable and insufficient intelligence and biased motivations. As we've learned in recent days, the DOJ, FBI, or both appear to have planted at least one person into Donald Trump's presidential campaign to infiltrate and surveil the campaign. Text messages exchanged between FBI agent Strzok and FBI counsel Lisa Page during the period of August 16, 2015 to May 17, 2017 contained serious evidence of political bias and the improper handling of investigations within the agency. The texts contain egregious evidence of bias, including Lisa Page stating, quote, Trump should go F himself, and Peter Strzok stating, quote, F Trump. Those text messages were not stored within the FBI archive system, an egregious oversight blamed on a technical glitch, and even after these messages were partially recovered by the Bureau's IG in January of 2018, many unanswered questions remain regarding impropriety and bias. Former Director Comey prepared a series of seven memorandum containing classified information, including notes on his conversations with President Trump. Comey admitted in sworn testimony to the Senate Committee on Intelligence on June 8, 2017, that he had leaked this content to a personal friend and encouraged that friend to share the material with the press in order to trigger a special counsel investigation. An investigation conducted by the Senate Judiciary Committee later revealed that the personal friend of Director Comey was Professor Daniel Richmond of Columbia Law School, and that Director Comey provided him with four of the seven memorandum. Director Comey's actions are a clear violation of non-disclosure agreements he signed as a condition of his appointment and a clear violation of FBI protocols regarding the dissemination of sensitive information outside of the Bureau, which are based on provisions of the Privacy Act of 1974. In March 2018, former FBI Director McCabe was fired by Attorney General Jeff Sessions, who noted that Deputy Director McCabe lacked candor, including under oath on multiple occasions, and had partaken in unauthorized disclosure to the news media among other violations noted in a report issued by the Office of the IG after a wide-reaching investigation into Deputy Director McCabe's conduct. A myriad of DOJ and FBI personnel have been fired or demoted or have been resigned, or have resigned, including FBI Director Comey, Deputy Director McCabe, Chief of Staff to the Director James Rubicki, FBI General Counsel James Baker, FBI Agent Strzok, FBI Counsel Page, FBI Special Agent Josh Campbell, DOJ Senior Official Orr, FBI Assistant Director Michael Cortan, and Assistant Attorney General Peter Kadzik. The DOJ has failed to timely comply with several related document requests by Congress. Providing members of Congress with heavily redacted versions of some, but not all, of the documents demanded, and offering members limited in-person viewing of these documents is an inadequate response to repeated requests after months of delay by the DOJ. As I prepare to introduce my colleagues, my fellow Americans, 
Melania and I are truly honored to wish every American a happy Independence Day. It was 242 years ago today in Philadelphia that 56 brave representatives of the American people adopted our Declaration of Independence. They announced to the world that America would be free and America would be independent. They pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. In so doing, they forever changed the course of human history. General George Washington and his army of brave patriots fought a long, tough war with the British to win America's freedom. Win they did. From Bunker Hill to Saratoga to Yorktown, American soldiers fought and died to secure our independence and to make a sovereign nation. Today, as we celebrate the 4th of July with friends and family, let us never forget that our freedom has been earned through the blood and sweat and sacrifice of American heroes. And these were great American heroes. And let us share the grateful heart of our nation with every veteran and member of the United States Armed Forces, truly special people. We are in awe of their courage, and we are eternally in their debt. Together, we honor their noble sacrifice by pledging our love and loyalty to our country, our flag, and our fellow citizens. We are and will always be one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. Happy Fourth of July, and God bless America. But I want to specifically address the family members that are here. There is no theory of the prosecution, Mr. Schiff, because there is no prosecution. There's a very big difference between a prosecution where you already have reached a conclusion and you're just trying to prove it to people. This is an investigation, which is why it's so sad that nowhere in that stack that you just put up there, where the emails of Secretary Clinton, the emails of the ambassador, 50,000 uh, 50, pages worth of documents, eyewitnesses, that's the real tragedy. To, to the family and the friends, when you're told that there have been seven previous investigations in an ARB, you should immediately ask, why did you miss so many witnesses? Why did you miss so many documents? This is not a prosecution, Mr. Schiff. You and I are both familiar with them. I've reached no conclusions, and I would advise you to not reach any conclusions either until we reach the end. There are 20 more witnesses. So I'll agree not to reach any conclusions if you'll do the same. With that, Madam Secretary, uh, regardless of where he ranked in the order of advisors, um, it is undisputed that a significant number of your emails uh, were to or from a Sidney Blumenthal. Now, he did not work for the State Department. He didn't work for the U.S. government at all. Uh, he wanted to work for the State Department, but the uh, White House said no to him. Do you recall who specifically at the White House rejected Sidney Blumenthal? No, I do not. After he was turned down for a job at the State Department by the White House, he went to work where? I, I think he had a number of uh, consulting contracts with different uh, entities. Well, if he had a number of them, do you recall any of them? I know that he did some work for my husband. Well, he worked for the Clinton Foundation. That's, uh, that's correct. Okay. He worked for Media Matters. Uh, that, uh, I'm, I'm sure he did. He worked for Correct the Record. I'm sure he did. When you were asked about Sidney Blumenthal, you said uh, he was an old friend mm -hmm. who sent you unsolicited emails, which you passed on in some instances because you wanted to hear from people outside what you called the bubble. We will ignore for a second whether or not Sidney Blumenthal is outside the bubble, but I do want to ask you about a couple of those other comments, because what you left out was that he was an old friend who knew absolutely nothing about Libya, was critical of President Obama and others that you work with, loved to send you political and image advice, had business interests in Libya, which he not only alerted you to, but solicited your help for, and you often forwarded his emails, but usually only after you redacted out any identifier so nobody knew where the information was coming from. What does the word unsolicited mean to you? It means that I did not ask him to um, send me the information that he sent me. And as I have previously stated, um, some of it I found interesting, some of it I did not, some of it I forwarded, some of it I did not. 
I did not know anything about any business interests. Um, I thought that uh, uh, just as I said previously, uh, newspaper articles, journalists, of which he uh, is one, a former journalist, had some interesting uh, insights. And so we, you know, we took them on board and uh, evaluated them, and uh, some were helpful and others were not. We're going to get to all the points you just made, but I want to start with your, uh, your public comment that these emails were unsolicited. Um, you wrote to him, another keeper, thanks and please keep them coming. Greetings from Kabul and thanks for keeping this stuff coming. Any other info about it? Question mark. What are you hearing now? Question mark. Got it. We'll follow up tomorrow. Anything else to convey? Question mark. Now that one is interesting because that was the very email where Mr. Blumenthal was asking you to intervene on behalf of a business deal that he was pursuing in Libya. What did you mean by what are you hearing now? I have no idea, uh, Congressman. Uh, they started out unsolicited, and as I said, some were of interest. I passed them on, and some were not. And well, so he continued to provide.